Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Natros 2000 in the five minute pool on ICC. Let's go for this King's Indian attack setup that I've been playing recently. Uh, and B5, okay, so yeah, this is a, a move. And I think Knight A3 is a decent way of playing against this line, attacking the pawn on B5, trying to entice it forward with B4. Or should Black defend it with a move like A6, maybe playing C4. I used to write for this website called chesspublishing.com. It's an opening theory website. And I remember looking at a couple uh, games featuring this line because I was the author of the flank opening section. Okay, d5, attacking the knight again. So I can play knight a5 if I like. And given that that hits the bishop with tempo, I think I should. And now I'm thinking knight back to b3. Although that looks a little strange. Maybe pawn a3 is also playable. Now let's play it safe and drop this back. So I've wasted some time with the knight, but... I think his b-pawn will be a target, and also he's like undeveloped his light square bishop. So on the whole, I don't think this is a bad deal for white. This might be an original position already at move 7. <laughs> this, it's quite possible this position has never been seen before in chess. Alright, so he's getting ready for c5 or, or e5, so I think I should play to stop that. And maybe attack this pawn as soon as possible. I'm a little fearful that he's going to play a5 and try to rush me. Maybe I shouldn't worry about that. Knight e5 would be kind of nifty. Let's castle first, though. We'll just postpone a decision. I mean, he's got to get developed, too. He can't really think too much about blowing me off the board with his wing pawns. Although it looks like he'll try. So knight e5 is threatening knight c6, trapping the queen. And is therefore tempting. Knight e5, knight takes, pawn takes, knight e7, f4, c5. That's sharp. And let's play it, because it also opens up the light square bishop. Maybe I can play for c4? We'll find out. I'm just going to check this player's stats real quick. They have a peak 5-minute rating of 2480, so clearly they're pretty good. Over 6,000 5-minute games played. I think bishop b7 is a re reasonable alternative to knight takes e5. And they do play that move. Maybe f4? It's a pretty powerful posted knight there. Hmm. Again, there's c4 as well. c4, a4, knight back to d2. Okay, I'm going to go for that instead. I changed my mind a bit. So we'll run the c-pawn and see what happens. He might take on passant. I'll take. If he plays a4, I'll drop the knight back to d2. Maybe a quick rook b1 thereafter to attempt to attack this bishop. Also, if the pawn comes to a4, it could be a target for the queen. Okay, do I want to take on d7 right now? I might want to insert that move. We'll just play knight d2 directly. Let's play knight d2 right away. I'll try to keep the knight on that square for a moment. Yeah, and he's going after the e5 pawn, but I thought this might give me some chances. Let's first play this move to attack the bishop. Probably he'll play bishop to c6, but then maybe knight f3 followed by knight d4. And that piece is not the most comfortable in the world on the c6 square. A lot of people play b5 on move 2, by the way, because it's uh, it's an extended fianchetto as opposed to playing just b6, and it is attractive in some regard for black. All right, so the a4 pawn is hanging, but if I take it, he takes e2. So I'm thinking c4 might be a better way to play this. Yeah, and c4 is thematic, trying to get rid of this backward pawn. If he takes e5, like then I can take a4 with check or take on d5 first. Might be even better. So I want this light square bishop to participate down the diagonal, so that's why I'm playing it this way. Hmm. E4, maybe? E4 he might take here. He's just creating a wall. A wall of pawns. If I take, he might take with a C pawn. And if e4, d takes c4 is what we're fearful of. Still, I think I should take that. 
We really want to play e4. e4 is the money move, I think. Therefore, let's go rook e1 in preparation for this. Also, rook e1 might allow me to take on a4, since bishop takes e2 would not be hitting my rook on f1. So there's something to be said for that move, for sure. Hmm. Queen takes a4, bishop takes e2. Queen c6, mm, that's suspicious. There's also e4, as I said. e4, knight takes e5, take here, knight d3. Okay, I'm going to go for that. f2 is a bit weak, i got to keep that in mind. He just closes the position. All right, let's go here. Defend e5, attack d4. Down on time, though. I gotta hurry. Mr. Natras seems like a fast player. Okay, let's just develop here. Defend this pawn. Threaten knight takes d4. Maybe I can attack him in King's Indian attack style with like h4, h5, knight h2, knight g4. Plan along those lines. Let's do it. Like I said, I'm going to have to speed up. So I'm going to kind of ignore the queen side and like his d4 pawn for now and just focus on my initiative on this wing. I think that'll be a smart plan because I have all my minor pieces over here. He's got all those minor pieces on the other wing. He's getting ready for knight c4. Let's play this though first. Just to harass him a bit, that bishop. I think he was trying to go knight c4. Now if knight c4, I might take. Okay, is that move kosher? Can't they do that? Now he might lose material. Because I'm attacking c4. Looks like he is. Bishop takes a2, rook takes c5. Surprised he's gonna allow this. Okay, let's just come here. All right, now I'm not gonna focus on the attack because I'm up material, so I'm gonna go, I think, queen a1, which hits the bishop and also hits d4. And this looks like very bad news for him. If rook c2, I have queen takes d4. Uh, let's just take that, and then we'll go Let's double up, actually. Double up on the on the knight on b6. Come here. I want to win d4. And we get a chance to do that. So now it looks like his knight is toast. Unless he plays knight d7. Knight d7, though, uh, if queen takes d7 doesn't work. Doesn't quite work. But I can just take b8 and then take a4. Something like that. Yeah, that's winning. If rook c6, I can play bishop e3, I believe. Although then he has rook d8. Uh, still, I think I should play this move. His knight's going to have to move soon. And then we win a4 at the very least. Also, where does his knight go? d7? Okay, let's just come here. Again, his knight is running out of squares. Oh, now his rook is under attack too. So we can do this. Hmm. Just retreat for now. Rook on d8's hanging as well. Okay, just take that. Yeah, and he resigns. All right, so he fell apart on the queen side before we even had to resort to king side play. Bishop c4 was a clear mistake, and that was right, right after I played rook c1, so bishop c4. I would bet that he should move his dark square bishop, maybe bishop a3 I was thinking, to attack my rook on c1. Bishop b4 is also possible, although I can play bishop d2 maybe. His d pawn's a little tender, so is a4. Let's go back and have a look at it though. Unusual opening, so 
After knight f3, knight f6, g3, black plays b5, the extended fianchetto. So if white just does nothing about the b5 move and just proceeds as normal with stuff like this, black can claim that their opening strategy has been a success because they've grabbed more space on the queen side than they would if the pawn stood on b6 as usual. So that's why one of white's highest scoring moves is to play this knight a3 move and attack the pawn on b5, not let black just gain that space that they're looking for. And I've seen some games where black plays a6, and I believe white plays c4 in response to that, and a b4, knight c2, attacking the pawn. And white encourages that pawn to come forward, and will try to argue that it's a weakness instead of a strength. So instead, he plays b4 straight away. I played knight c4, d5. I'm going to add the engine here. Knight a5. Okay, the computer prefers this, but knight a5 looks logical to me, hitting the bishop with tempo. Yeah, now I drop the bishop back. Maybe I should undermine with a3 straight away. Because when I move that knight from a5, it gives black's pawn a reason to come up to this square. So playing a3 directly has some advantages. I mean, even if I were to do, do something as simple as this, although, yeah, this could complicate attacking my rook and establishing two strong pawns in the center. Hmm. This could get weird. B4 is what the engine wants to play. <laughs> and then maybe try to recapture. If E5, I assume I would take with a knight. Strange position. I'm willing to concede that knight B3 was not the most accurate, though. I think I could improve on that. So knight Bd7. And this move supports C5 and E5, so I figured that D4 was appropriate. And now E6, castle, A5. I jump the knight in, bishop back to b7, because otherwise black's queen would be embarrassingly trapped, you know, in something like this. That would be nice for white. And here I went for c4. He took en passant. a4, knight back to d2, knight d7. Okay, so nothing totally out of the ordinary. Yeah, I wonder if rook b1, despite looking like a logical move to attack the bishop with tempo is mistaken because after he puts the bishop on a6, it was harder to play e4 with my rook constantly hanging on f1. So I wonder if just going for e4 or even c4 right away is better. And I can always play rook b1 if I want to, but there's some value in ensuring his bishop isn't transferred to this diagonal where it hampers my ability to push my e-pawn. Yeah, I think that would have been superior. Instead, though, I uh, went forward with c4, but he played c6, and now it seems like if black manages to complete their development, they're going to be better, because I have these doubled e-pawns, and the pawn on e5 is especially weak. So I went here, bishop c5, and I played for e4. He played d4 and closed it. Okay, so still about equal, this position, bishop f4. It's interesting to see the shift and how you have to have a flexible mindset when you play chess sometimes, because uh, previously I thought my chances were on the queen side in undermining black's pawns and trying to attack those weaknesses. But now that he's gotten out of the woods on that side of the board, it doesn't appear to me that a4 and d4 are especially weak. I just have problems attacking and winning those pawns. Like, you know, if queen takes a4 here, I run into bishop d3. There's always issues with black uh, creating a discovered attack on my queen. So now I've just made up my mind that I'm going to ignore the queen side as much as I can and attack on the king side, which is what I would have done had black not presented me with that opportunity to win a piece. So he played knight b6, and I went h4. Maybe this plan is mistaken, I don't know. The engine doesn't think too highly of it. Let's see its move. Queen d7, okay, what if I just play h5, h6, let's say I play knight here, trying to come here. This is pretty standard stuff. Knight g4, queen d8. Yeah, the computer's not impressed by my demonstration on the king side, but <laughs> for a human, I mean, this doesn't look like a minus one position to me. Black has all their pieces massed in this quadrant, basically. And I would fear sacrifices on h6 if I were black, or maybe even a knight f6 type move. Check. I know this doesn't work right now, but something like this, looking to get the queen in. The engine is so cold-blooded. 
It's like, yeah, you can do that, but it's not good. I've crunched everything, and I know it's not good. <laughs> so instead, they played rook b8, and I thought it was prudent to get my rook off the b-file, because if I were to press on with h5, I think black is ready to play knight c4 soon. So I saw that I could attack the bishop with tempo, which is in turn defending d4, so it might be helpful to kick that bishop away. Yeah, and here you should play bishop b4, or maybe bishop a3. Bishop b4, bishop d2, now bishop a3, okay. Rook b1, I might have to go back. Queen c7, and it's roughly equal. Maybe black is slightly for choice. Complicated position. I don't think anything is entirely clear here. But yes, he just created an alignment problem with bishop c4, and after knight d2, this bishop can't move because he loses the bishop behind it. He did move the bishop. I think bishop b4 might be a, a bit better of a chance, because at least that way, if I go take this bishop, he can win the rook on e1. So he'll have a rook against two minor pieces versus being down a piece for a pawn. I'd rather have a rook for two minor pieces than just, yeah, being down two points of material, piece for pawn. I think I played the, the rest reasonably well. Queen a1 is the type of move you play when you uh, are accustomed to picking up on undefended pieces. If you guys remember my very first chess fundamentals video, it seems like a while ago, it's been almost a year since I published that video, but the, the topic of that video was undefended pieces and it just permeates every level of chess. And here, black has an undefended bishop on a2 and an undefended pawn on d4. Everything else is secure for him to some degree. The b6 knight is a little unstable, but these are the two points that are weak, a2 and d4, and with queen a1, we can double attack. And those are the type of moves that you just naturally start to look at when you're used to taking an accounting of the undefended pieces in your position and your opponent's position. Bishop c4, I took it, doubled up. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't allow him too much counterplay here. I mean, with 45 seconds, you're always worried that something's going to go wrong, but the position is too difficult for black to think about holding. I guess here I could maybe play bishop takes b6, couldn't I? Oh, I could have just played bishop takes c4. <laughs> All right. I think I mentioned that on the next move. I was like, oh, the rook is actually hanging, but I could have taken it on the previous move. Doesn't matter much, but... Yeah, and we eventually won. Okay, so interesting line, this idea with b5, the extended fianchetto. I think white can get an edge against this line, but you see it leads to original positions. Probably I should have played to undermine his queen side a little faster than I did. And it's paradoxical, but rook b1, the rook move with tempo on the bishop, is probably a mistake. Because after bishop a6, it's harder for me to get e4 in. But, yeah, um, a nice victory nonetheless, I think. Happy with the way I played that. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.